Let's see a revival breakout. Let's see Jesus move. Let's allow him to move so powerfully that we're never the same. You see, fire spreads. All it takes is a spark. All it takes is somebody that's willing to catch on fire and burn and burn some more and burn some more and don't care who thinks what and you burn some more. If you want to see miracle signs and wonders, you need to burn. If you want to see miracle signs and wonders, you need to not give up. Right? Look it, we're in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. And if you're ever going to get busy, it's time to get busy now. That means that we must save souls. That means that we must cast out devils. That means that we must pray for the sick and watch the sick be healed. We must pray for miracles anywhere and everywhere where God is able to show up strong and mighty in our midst. Amen? Whew. My wife said, come in easy. <laughs> That's easy, guys. <laughs> God is moving in Europe. God is moving in South America. God is moving in North America. God is moving in Africa. God is moving in Asia. God is moving in the Middle East. God is moving all over the world. The glory of God, the power of his presence is covering the globe right now. And all it means is this. God is going to touch the entire world by his glory. It's not just something that's going to swirl around the globe. It's going to be something you feel and experience where the touch of God comes out of you every which way you turn. You are the carriers of glory. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple. That means wherever we go, the glory comes out. And depending on how much you're willing to yield, to allow his fire to come, to allow him to burn through you, will determine how far the reach is. I can tell you're hungry. I can tell you're hungry. Yes. Say amen. amen. Okay, okay. We're kingdom of God. We're not British. We're not, though we are British, and we're not American, though we are American. First and foremost, we're kingdom of God. Yes. That means so be it in the earth. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay. I'm not talking to a dead church. I'm talking to a live church. I'm not talking to a lukewarm church. I'm talking to an on-fire church. Amen? We do not have to live under the containment of the atmosphere wherever we are. It doesn't matter if you're in Germany. It doesn't matter if you're in Italy. It doesn't matter if you're in Switzerland, Portugal, or England, or Wales, or Scotland, or Ireland, or any other kind of land. We do not live under the atmosphere. We create it. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. Well, you know, when we get to a point where we've had enough of the devil trying to mess with the people around us and the, and the people in the city and the shop attendant and, and the kids at school, and, and your workmates and your neighbors, when you get fed up with the devil, that's when you do something about it. That's when you break his power, you rebuke him, you cast him out, and you watch the power of God flood in. <sighs> Hallelujah. Babe, is, is this gentle enough, sweetheart? No. <laughs> You know, I try to be Heidi Baker. It just doesn't work. You know? I, seriously, I mean, I could be Mother Teresa, but I just can't do it. That's not my makeup. You know, I... Jesus just made me this way. 
And he'll use anyone and everyone. He'll use our personalities that it isn't, wow, he's a loud American. I could be loud and British. Look, I've lived, I've lived among the Brits. I've lived among the Kiwis. I've lived among the Australians. You know, I, I've, I've, I've been in this nation. The first time I came to this nation was in 1993 where revival was breaking out all over this country. All over the UK. How many of you guys remember that? That there was revival in the 90s here. Okay, I went to Colin Dye's church, Kensington Temple, in 1993, and God was breaking out. Renewal was hitting. Holy laughter was breaking out. God was bringing something new and fresh. It, it came through the hunters. It came through uh, uh, people like Rodney Howard Brown and others, where God came in. He came in into the churches, the Pentecostal churches, but he also started touching the Baptist churches. He started touching the Anglican churches where Anglicans were getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. Well, you know that's a miracle. When the vicar's drunk and it's not off of that scotch, uh-oh, when the vicar's drunk off the new wine and he is spreading the new wine and giving drink to others, you know God's moving. And when it starts to hit the Catholic priest and it starts breaking barriers of denominational lines and God begins to move in a powerful way in any church, any people group where they love Jesus, guess what happens? It spreads and spreads and spreads. It's contagious. God wants to do it again. I said God wants to do it again. Well, you're getting a little lively now. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you're 13, 14, 15. It doesn't matter if you're 75. It doesn't matter if you're a grandma that's in her 80s. It does not matter if you're single or married or whatever. All that matters is that you're willing to burn on fire. I don't care who watches me burn. I really don't. I don't care if I'm in a store. I don't care if I'm on the street corner. I really don't care. You know why? Because Jesus is Lord. As soon as we get rid of public opinion, can I just start just talking about stuff? Thanks, love. <laughs> as soon as we get free of public opinion, as soon as we get rid of being politically correct, as soon as we stop allowing the world to contain us, we just might see the book of Acts happen. We just might see an uproar in the city. We m just might see a people group that turned the world upside down. Look, I want to see revival. How about you? Now, revival begins in here. Revival begins in your heart. Revival begins when you finally break and you hit your knees or you hit your, 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 the carpet and you lay down and you begin to say, God, do it. When you ask the refiner's fire to come, <laughs> when you ask <laughs> the refiner's fire to come, guess what? He will deal with the junk and get it out. And when he does, you begin to become free, free of the fear of man, free of the opinions of men, free from what people think. I don't care what people think when I worship God. I don't care if people think I'm crazy because I pray in tongues. Why? Because it's a sign to unbelievers. 
Oh. I don't care if a demon comes out in public. Jesus did it. I do not care if somebody starts screaming out in the middle of the street because I know Jesus is doing something. I've watched God move in churches around the world. I've watched God move in the streets around the world. I've seen revival. I've seen where God shows up because of one word, a prophetic word, and not just a couple hundred people show up or a few hundred people. No, a thousand, three thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand, fourteen thousand, 14,000, every night. Over and thousands and thousands of people flying in from all over the world because God decided to burn at the altar. And people were hungry enough to let him. And they didn't care about anything else. They didn't care about the time. They didn't care about the order of service. They didn't care about the methodology. All they cared about is that God showed up. The kids are intrigued by the glory of God. The old are touched by the glory of God. The young hearts are melted by the glory of God. But we have to be willing to say, burn. Burn in me. Burn in me, Jesus. I want revival fire. I don't care what my friends think. I don't care what they think on social media. I do not care. I don't care. I don't care if a king or a queen or a president or a prime minister or, or any other world leader shows up because I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. And when we get to that point, we're going to go from revival fire to fire spreading. I drove through the fields of Germany and, and Switzerland yesterday and I saw cornfields everywhere. You drive through the hills in England, you see all the yellow grass. One match. One match. Everywhere. All it needs is one spark in the harvest fields, and it will burn like wildfire. Shata la lavasa. Babe, I'm really trying to be gentle, sweetheart. Uh, it's too late. I've already gone overboard. I've crossed the line of no return. I want to see God move. I want to see God move right now. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. You know, tomorrow, if we really wanted, we can see 100 people saved within a couple hours. Do you know that? Do you know if we really wanted, we can see two, three, four hundred people saved by Monday? If we really wanted it. Where we would come back with testimonies of people that were praying and asking God to help them. And you cross their path. And they would say, I asked God to help me. And you showed up. That happened just a couple weeks ago in Florida. We were walking into a store, and there was a homeless man. I walked by, I gave him some money, and he said, I was asking Jesus to help me right now, and you walked up and gave me money. And then I carry, I carry T-shirts in, in my car just to give out to poor people. So I went and got the t-shirts and I went and got some more money and, and we went back around and gave it to him again. Because we were the answer to his prayer. This isn't something I do from a platform. I do this everywhere. 
We want to see revival, but we want to see it in the entire city. It begins right here, right now. Like we said, we want to see revival right now. Come on, let's get it right now. Right in here, right now. Right here, right now. Whew. Revive what's dead in me. Let me live. Let me come alive in your presence. If Jesus was coming back next Friday, what would you do? If you knew that he was going to show up next Friday, what would you do? Would you pray or would you do? Because we pray. We're praying for revival. All you got to do is smack yourself in the head and say, be revival and go do it. Wow. That's a good prayer, isn't it? I should get you all to do it right now. If he was coming back next Friday, ask yourself what you would do. He's coming very, very soon. And he wants laborers in the harvest field. It does not matter your age. It does not matter if you're educated or not. You have the Holy Ghost in this book. And you can take it to anyone, anywhere. I remember, I'm going to tell you a story. I remember meeting with a few Bible college students. My Bible school, we went out to go eat at um, a steak place, a steakhouse. And after we walked out, there were some kids out in the parking lot. And they, were, they were teenagers, you know, they, maybe 15, 16, 17. Can I tell you, teenagers do not know what they want. They don't know what they want. They're looking. They, they're searching. They're trying to find something that, that, that satisfies them, that's real. They want the real. They don't want fake stuff. And I walked up and started talking to these kids, and there was, there was five of them. There was four, four young men and then one young lady. I walked up. I started talking to them. I asked them if they knew about Jesus. One of them said yes. Then I had a word of knowledge. And I pointed to the guy out of five of them. I said, your grandmother prays in tongues for you. The Lord just showed me her praying in tongues for you. And he's all, oh man, he goes, why'd you bring my grandma into this? <laughs> and I said, because Jesus loves you and she's crying out for your soul so you don't go to hell. I said, I'm here tonight to tell all of you he loves you and that you can be forgiven of every sin and that you can live for him and you don't have to go out there and get high. And I said, do you want to accept Jesus tonight, right now? Some kid pulls out a cigarette, throws them to the ground, rubs them out on the floor, and he said, I do. The girlfriend says, yeah, I do too. All five of them get saved. Since we're all Bible school students, I told the guys with me, get behind them. I laid hands on them right there in the parking lot. Power of God knocks them all out on the floor, and they're shaking in the Holy Ghost on the floor. Guess what happens? A police car drives up. <laughs> And I was like, oh, Lord, this is going to get interesting. Jesus, help me. They pull up. They look at these kids shaking on the ground. And they look at me and they said, what is going on? And I said, they just got touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus just saved them, forgave them of their sins. I said, there's a righteous judge in heaven. And I said, he's coming to judge all of mankind, including you too. Just like if you have to bring somebody to court and they're going to go through uh, the process of being justified or not. 
I said, that's you guys too. And they looked at me and I said, you guys need to be saved too. They, they looked out the window at these kids, shaking under the power of God, weeping. They looked at me and they said, okay, you have a good night. And they drove away. I have testimonies every week of revival hitting people's lives. We go to the smoothie shop, the juice shop, my daughter and I. We go to the juice shop, this lady's limping like this, the owner. I look at her and I said, what's wrong with your hip? She goes, I have a dislocated hip. And she was like agonizing pain. I looked at her from across the counter and I said, Jesus is going to heal your hip right now. And she looked at me and I said, right now on the count of three, one, two, three, Jesus heal her hip. She looked at me, she walked normal and began to weep hysterically. My daughter looked at me like, dad. And I looked at her going, man, God's in this place. <laughs> so she says, my shoulder too. She goes, I can't lift my arm. I said on the count of three, one, two, three, arm be healed, shoulder be healed. She gets healed instantly. She begins to bawl her brains out. Remember the lady at Planet Smoothie? Yeah. So she gets healed. Then her mother comes, a little grandma comes running up. She goes, me too. My, I have arthritis in my hands. <laughs> I, I touch her hands. I command her hands to be healed. I command her body. They both get radically healed. Miracle, instant miracle. And then I said, you know why Jesus did that for you? Because he loves you. He loves both of you so much and he wants to save you. And, you, and this lady seemed like she had a hard life. You know, she, she'd been through some stuff. And I said, do you want to give your life to Jesus right now and be saved? She's crying still uncontrollably, checking her body. And she can't even talk. She just nods her head weeping. So I said, repeat this prayer after me. We all held hands. And mom, the owner of the store, and grandma both got saved, right? And, and we were like, what? And I'm like, Jesus is all over this room swirling around. We bought, some, we bought some smoothies. We gave them a tip. And we walked out going, man, God just showed up in the smoothie place. You know what happened? Revival broke out in the juice store. So if Jesus was coming next Friday, what would you do? Well, we need to live like he can come at any moment. This is no joke what's going on in the world, and most preachers are afraid to talk about it. Most preachers are afraid to talk about it because they're afraid to be persecuted. But the scripture says that if you're persecuted for my name's sake, that the glory will rest upon you. Huh. You know, in the book of Acts, you had Peter, James, and John walking by the crippled man, they get healed, going through, they get thrown in jail, and they're like, we're not leaving quietly. You put us in here quietly? No, you were loud about it, so we're going to be loud about it. And they preached. They preached everywhere in the streets with crowds. Why? Because they were burning. I want to impart some fire into you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> where fire spreads. Where if it's in me, it's in you. It can be in you. The enemy tried to lock down the church globally in the last 24 months. That's never happened in the history of mankind. Satan himself tried to lock down the church and shut down the gospel but guess what this book right here this book cannot be stopped this book cannot be shut down yeah. 
You can burn somebody at the stake and they'll still be preaching if they're sold out. They'll be, they'll be burning and laughing in joy at the same time. Why? Because if you know it and you have it, nothing can stop you. Nothing can kill you. And if you die, you willingly lay down your life for the gospel. Or it's your time and you go. And you can't be afraid of that neither. Wow, we got quiet in here. You cannot be ashamed. You cannot be ashamed. Well, tone it down. Take it easy. No, I'm not seeker sensitive. I am not seeker sensitive. I'm Jesus sensitive. I'm Holy Ghost sensitive. And when the Holy Ghost starts prompting me, I'm going to do what he wants me to do. We were going to get something to eat right here in town. And I'm like, man, I want to get these kids saved right now. I'm like, we haven't eaten yet today. I said, we're going to get some people saved. We're going to get some people saved here. Let's get some people saved. Amen? Are you guys alive? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have this word revival. And then we have another word that we put next to it called fire. Revival, fire. But we all have different definitions. <laughs> what is revival? Well, I know what it is and what it's not. What is fire? Well, depends on what temperature you want the fire to be. Little fire, big fire, hot, hot fire, coals burning. When the touch of God comes and the burning coals touch our lips and the question comes from heaven like it did to Isaiah, whom shall we send? Isaiah responded, here I am. Send me. I don't care what it costs. I just want you. I pray that there's somebody in this room. I pray that everyone in this room gets what I'm talking about where the angel of the Lord can come and you, here I am, send me. And he touches your lips with a burning coal of fire. And you're like, woe is me, I'm undone. And you become undone. If you go to a meeting like in the Netherlands, it'll rock you. If you go to Argentina, it'll rock you. If you go into meetings where the glory of God is really, really strong, or there is preaching that's full of fire or you have the anointing that's destroying yokes and lifting burdens it will rock you it will shake you it will quake you it will awaken you it will cause you to burn in such a way that you won't want to go another day without looking around saying where can I spread the fire All it takes is one. All it takes is two or three. All it takes is 12 to turn the whole world upside down. We were in Italy last week, and I, I was just, I was blown away thinking, Paul the Apostle brought the gospel from Rome. And it touched the whole world. I had a dream a few days ago when we were in Italy, and it was... <sighs> Now, it was an attack from the enemy. In the dream, this book right here was up on the stairs like that in the front of the house. And I went to go get my, my Bible. And I saw 
a snake. I thought it was a big lizard. And I saw the snake start to slither. And it went in front of the word. And I was trying to get my Bible. And it came and it went to strike at me. Whoosh. And she woke me up in the dream because I was fighting a demon. And the snake went to bite me. And I knew it was poisonous. And I, I thought I saw it raise its head up. And I went to kick it. And I went to kick it again. And in my dream, I was kicking in my sleep. And she's all, Rob, wake up. I'm like, man, I was fighting a demon. Then I started fighting it and praying against it and breaking its power. And I knew it was a demon that was trying to stop me from getting here and speaking what I'm speaking. And not, not last night, but the night before, in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit woke me up. No, it was last night. It was last night in, in, in Germany. The Lord woke me up four or five times and he said, Malta. And I'm like, oh, what's Malta, Malta? I'm like, Malta. And he said it again, Malta, Malta. And as we were driving to the airport, I was thinking about it. And when I got on the plane, I looked up and I'm like, Malta in the word. And it went to, to Acts 27 and 28. And it was the little island off of Sicily where Paul got shipwrecked and what happened was the whole ship about 340 people everything got destroyed they ended up on the Isle of Malta all the people of Malta showed up Paul was grabbing some some wood they were building a fire because they were all wet and a snake bites him I'm like Oh, God's showing me something right now. This is really good. That's why you're telling me Malta in the middle of the night. Not like malt shake, Malta. And he, the scripture says that Paul shook the snake off into the fire. And everybody began to judge him. And the people said, he's cursed by God. And then they waited around for him to drop dead, and he didn't. And then they looked at him and said, he must be a god. You know what happened in that story? One minute he was judged, but, and the opinions of men said that he's cursed of God. Then next minute, they're praising him like he is a god. Can I tell you, don't be bound by the opinions of men. I really feel like that's the word tonight. The reason being is because the Holy Ghost came and showed me what happened when the demon was trying to, to, to attack me and poison me. And guess what? That Bible's with me. And I was up in the middle of the night reading it last night. And I was reading it on the plane. And now I'm speaking it. And the devil loses. Amen? And don't let, can I say that this? this is my point at hand. Do not let the poison of the opinions of men stop you from being bold in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the opinions of men stop you from being free in praise and worship. Don't let the opinions of men stop you from sharing the gospel or standing up for what is right or what you believe in. There is tyranny in the nations of the world. There are evil people in the, in, that are running the world. And they're trying to do something called a great reset. Oh, do you guys know what that is? Well, go look it up. Okay? They're trying to reset and turn the whole world over and change the economies of the world and change everything in the nations of the world where we become a one world money system and a one world government. And Jesus is coming back soon. And we don't have to fear none of that. Why? Because when the train of glory comes by and the rapture comes, we're on that train. We will hear of famines. We will hear of rumors of wars. We will hear of earthquakes. We will hear of plagues. 
in the last days, all those things Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows. But he said, do not fear and do not lose hope. Keep your joy and do what I said. Why? Because this gospel must be preached to the utter ends of the earth. And then I will come. So when Jesus comes back, guess what? There's going to be a tribulation on the earth like never seen before. And the greatest revival is going to happen the day after the rapture. Jesus is coming back. He's coming for a bride that's glorious. That word glorious means intoxicated in love, drunk in the Holy Ghost, in love with Jesus. He's coming back for a glorious bride without spot or wrinkle. We're going to go into the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we're going to experience that glory in heavenly realms in heaven. All of us get to go. We're invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then after that, we're coming back with Jesus. And he's going to create a new heaven. And he's going to create a new earth. And guess what? We have nothing to fear for God is with us. He will provide for us. He will work miracles for us. He will move heaven and earth for us. Mountains will be cast into the sea. The dead will be raised. Dead dreams will be raised. Devils will leave this city. And God will move. Hallelujah. Are you hungry? Is this okay? How about we see a revival in the Anglican church? How about we see a revival in the Catholic church? How about we see a revival among the Methodists and the Lutherans and, and, and the Baptists and, and every other denomination? How about we start with the Holy Ghost moving right here in this house and we watch it start to spread? How about people start coming from afar because the glory of God showed up here? The anointing resides where people come and they get healed, they get set free, they get delivered, and they come and they get their miracle. Amen? I know I'm not prim and proper. <laughs> Neither was John the Baptist. Neither was Peter when he said, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That in the last days I will pour out, out my spirit upon all flesh. They were mocking. They were saying these guys are drunk with new wine. Guys were being persecuted. People were being martyred S servants disciples of jesus were being martyred they were being thrown in prison but they did not give a rip they did not care what everyone thought so much so that people knew th that they had been with jesus Three thousand get saved. Five thousand get saved. Whew. That can happen anywhere. That can happen anywhere. Entire schools can be saved. Entire universities can be saved. Entire cities can be saved. The question is, can a nation be saved in a day? Yes, it can. 120 years ago, revival broke out all over this country, all over the UK, from a little young teenage boy named Evan Roberts and some choir girls praying. And God shows up in Wales. They didn't have Instagram, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have Twitter, they didn't have telephones. They had the Holy Ghost. And God's cloud came into a little chapel. And people came from everywhere. It changed Wales. It changed the United Kingdom. At the same time, uh, William Seymour, a blind black man in Los Angeles, gets touched by the Holy Ghost and revival breaks out in America. Whew. Touches the whole world. Why? couple of people that were very unassuming decided to seek the Lord and said burn in me 
Let me be revival. Let me be revival. Let me be revival. Jesus loves us. And he loves the lost. I briefly walked through a block of Ashford and I saw a bunch of lost young kids. Totally lost. They lost. We all noticed it. I said they don't know Jesus. But they can. They can. And all it takes is somebody just to open their mouth. You have so much in you, all of you. I, I know, I walked into this place and Jesus' presence was out in the parking lot. I got out of, I got out of Nick's car and I sensed his presence and I'm like, you're here, Jesus. You're here. You're here at Numa Church. And I walk in through the doors and I get hit by his presence. And the anointing hit me. I said, oh, you're here. And then I walk over here and he hits me again. I see Herbie. He hits me again. And then I'm watching you worship and the glory of God's coming in this place. You have something very, very special. The presence of the Lord is here. Now, let's bring it to the city. Let's bring it to the city. Let's bring it to the people that are dying of thirst. The scripture says it this way about the river of God. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap this thing up. I'm going to pray for a few folks. I'm going to wrap this up, but we have tomorrow night and we have Sunday morning. I'm just, like my wife said, I'm just easing you into this. <laughs> The scripture says this, that the river of God came in Ezekiel 47. And he said, I saw this river and it hit me in the ankles. Whew. Then, then I began to walk and it, it went to my knees. And I walked some more, another thousand cubics. And it touched me by, at my waist, the river of God. Mm. And then I went a little further and I could not walk anymore. Because I was swimming in it. I was swimming in it. And the scripture says that this river came out of the sanctuary through the doors and it touched everywhere it went. And it brought healing. It brought healing. Anywhere the river went, it brought healing. And can I say this? You have a river inside of you. You have a river inside of you waiting to flood everywhere. All of Ashford, all of Kent County, all of England. Hmm. Feeling this? Doesn't matter, male or female. Mary Woodworth Eddy. Catherine Kuhlman, Amy Simple McPherson, all the heroes of revival that were women did it. Doesn't matter. Hallelujah, it doesn't matter. Come here. I'm going to wrap it up with that. We'll go part two tomorrow night. I promise I'm going to really be easy when we start tomorrow, okay? Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Look at me. Face me. There we go. Thanks, son. You know the drill. <laughs> Take that. Take that. Take that. I watched you weep through this.
this entire message. You are a carrier of the glory of God Almighty. He will use you to take it everywhere. I pray what's on me comes on you. On the count of three, one, two, three. Take that. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just lift up our hands and thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, bring it, Holy Ghost. I like the name of your church, Holy Ghost Church. That means he can come here. Come here. Hmm? Just lift up your hands. Take that. Take that. See anointing. Take that. That's the anointing. It's called impartation. It's called the equipping of the saints. Look at me. Take that. Come on, we can, we can give Jesus praise. He's worthy. Amen. Come on. You too, sir. Come on, lift up your hands. Anoint. Anoint him. Anoint him. Hallelujah. I'm on assignment. I'm not just here to play. Jesus, come on. Jesus, come on. This couple right here. What am I doing? What are you doing, Rob? I'm transferring the fire and the anointing. I have people that contact me all over the world. They've been doing it for years, saying, you prayed for me and my life was entirely changed. <laughs> and some of them are preachers now. And some of them are carrying revival fire. I had, I had an Indian gentleman I prophesied over 15 years ago. Prayed that the fire would go into him. I prophesied that he would go into India and I, I spoke some major cities to him. From that point on, he ended up becoming a pastor. 15 years go by and in May of this year, he contacted me on Facebook and he said, Pastor Rob, he said, you prophesied this 15 years ago. I don't know if you remember it or not, but you spoke of, of Mumbai. You spoke of all these, church, these uh, cities in India. He said, I just went. I preached 18 meetings in one week in all these cities. And he said, the same thing that happened to me happened to all the people I prayed for and revival fire broke out. I remember praying for a young girl that was 17. Fire of God hit her. She burned for 24 hours. They had to carry her out and she was burning. They put her in the car. She kept burning. She burned all night long. Woke up the next day. Burned some more. Came to the church service still burning. Drunk in the Holy Ghost. Burning. By God. Encountering God all through the night. She goes back to her church. The pastor asked her to get up. Within five minutes of her speaking, the glory of God fell in the church. The pastor asked her to pray. 
And the whole entire church got hit by the power of God. And they all started burning. And they started revival meetings from that night onward. And revival broke out from another revival. It's called the power of impartation. The power of transference. May I, that I may come and impart a blessing. That I may come and impart part something that can change the world hallelujah come on yes you said good day to me come on up yep yeah the little guy in the back <laughs> let's lift up your hands well, big guys I don't even use catchers Here it comes, the fire of God. On the count of three, one, two, three, fire! Take it all. Who said, oh, Jesus? Oh, come on, come up here. Come on, love. Come on, have a drink of this. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not here. I'm not here. Oh, well, you can go now. You're going to be gone. Lord, I pray that you'd make her so high in love with you, drunk. Drunk in the Holy Ghost. Everybody take a drink of the new wine. Just say, you know. <laughs> oh, drink some new wine. Come on, stop being so... You know what I mean. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Burn, 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 burn. You watch. Oh, you watch. God got a hold of me when I was 10 years old. Got called to preach. Knocked out under the power of God multiple times. I had somebody prophesy I was going to preach to the masses of the world. Ah, I ended up on drugs, ended up a homeless person at 18 years old, lived in a cardboard box for a year. God got a hold of me and he used me. Raised me up to be a preacher and bring revival around the world. Okay. It's okay. He can use anybody and he'll use me. He'll use you. He'll use anybody. Come on. We're going to wrap this thing up. I got two minutes left. Come on up here. We're going to pray for everybody by the end of the weekend, though. Yeah, come on. I speak joy over this house and new wine. Holy Ghost power and wine. Holy Ghost power and wine. New wine. Hallelujah. Woo. All it takes is one. <laughs> well, come on, just put your hands out in front of you and say, Lord, give me some. Uh, the gentleman with the New York hat. Come on. Yeah, I know. You're like, who, me? Yeah, you're the only guy with a New York hat on. Come on up. You're, I know you're a little freaked out, but come on up. Uh, you go to church here? <laughs> What's your name? James. Hi, James. My name is Rob. Are you tripping out? Are you freaking out? No. Have you seen this before? Yeah. Have you seen this before? No. Do you feel that? Here it comes. Feel that? <sighs> Don't worry. What happens is our bodies can't take the power of Jesus. So sometimes we short circuit and they fall out. It's just like somebody that had too much scotch. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> I know. I'll just say you drank some wine or some, uh, you know, a um, couple jugs of beer. And you just can't take it, so you can't stand up. Because your body cannot take that. Just like if somebody has 
morphine for a surgery. Your body can't take it because it's a foreign substance that goes in and touches you. But this is the love of Jesus. It's the power of Jesus. And you'll feel it burn in your heart and he'll touch your arms and your legs. And it will overwhelm you so much so that you can't take it. And you'll feel kind of intoxicated. And Jesus will make himself real to you by his power. So I want you to close your eyes and just say, James, say this. Say, Jesus, close your eyes. Say, Jesus, Jesus. touch me with your power. Touch me with your power. Here he comes on the count of three. One, two, three. Take that. Take that, James. Take it all. Yeah, let it go in. Enjoy it. You don't have to try, try to get rid of yeah, that's it. I'm going to land this, okay? But the Lord gave me a word of knowledge at the beginning of this um, meeting. And uh, I'm going to save it for tomorrow night. <laughs> so it might be you. So come tomorrow night and you might find out. I'm going to pray for folks. I'm going to prophesy over people. I'm gonna, we're going to get people healed. You're going to get your miracle, okay? Say this. Say, I'm going to get a miracle this weekend. How about you invite everybody? How about you bring somebody that doesn't know Jesus? Just say, hey, come and check this out. Just come and check this out. Does that sound good? Okay, the Lord told me he wants me to do this now. There's somebody that has a front porch. It's a concrete porch. And I think you hurt yourself or something walking up the stairs toward the door. Um, I'm not sure who it is. Um, it kind of messes with me because my wife broke her foot um, six months ago on, on the stairs. But somebody, I'm pretty sure, somebody hurt themselves? Is that, so who's that? Come on up here. Now, I, I, you know, I, I couldn't end this meeting. <laughs> I could not leave here tonight without calling this out, okay? Is that you? Yeah, I was holding my grandson and I was walking towards my daughter's porch and I fell over with him in my arms and broke my ankle. Okay, say this out loud. Just repeat what you just told me. I was holding my grandson walking towards my daughter's porch and I fell and rolled my ankle over. My grandson was okay, but my ankle was broken, but it hasn't been right since. Um, because yeah. the ankle is healed, but the tendons and the muscles are just shot. Well, that's what my wife's been experiencing. <laughs> okay, but you know what? For the Lord to tell me that when I walked in to the meeting and for him to tell me three or four times when I'm trying to end this meeting and I said I was going to do it tomorrow night and he said no I want you to say this now that means he's going to heal you because he loves you okay and it's been bothering you and you're concerned if you're ever going to walk again properly but you are Okay, and the, the healing anointing is going to go into that ankle and into those tendons and into your joint, and you're going to be better, okay? Okay, everybody just stretch out your hands. Yeah, let's just pray. Say, be healed, be healed. in Jesus' name. Jesus. On the count of three, take the anointing, the healing anointing. One, two, three. Be healed, ankle. Okay, let's give Jesus one more hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.